Welcome everyone! In this video I will show you the difference between Spring Controller and REST Controller annotations and how to use them to catch the user request and send back some response depending on what you want to do. If you want to follow along you can go to Spring Initializer and use this setup or you can download the code for free from my GitHub which is in the link of the description. So let's start! Okay, so the first thing that we need to do, we need to create an object of which we want to create the representational state transfer. So let's say that we have a bread object and it's an entity because we're going to save it to the database. Uh, we have a generated auto-generated ID and uh, bread has a name and it has a price. And uh, then we need to create the constructors and also getters and setters for each, each of these properties. And now that we have the bread object, so we can create new bread and we can also search for our bread and return that bread object. And we want a controller, so we want to let the user search or create for our bread. So let's now create or see how I implemented the plain controller, so using only the controller annotation. Okay, so here we have our plain controller class, which is annotated with the controller annotation. So just a basic controller. We have a request mapping, so we will catch requests of type something, 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 bread. Okay, and then when it catches the bread uh, mapping, it will search for one of these methods. And this one will be a get request to bread and some ID, let's say five, and this one will be a post request to bread create. Okay? And so the first thing we want to do is we want to create the bread and we send it to this mapping and we produce an application JSON. As you can see in here, we have a request body tag. That means that the spring will take the request body and automatically parse it to our bread object. So if I go to the postman, it's an application that is useful for testing web applications. It's free to download, it's called postman. And in here, I can send a post request on this endpoint. And in the body, I will put a JSON file name with bread price 75 and when I send it now nothing will happen okay first I need to start the application of course uh, when I send the request spring will automatically parse this JSON into my Java object but as you can see there is a error not found so we have a 404 not found why is it 404 not found if we have it here because we need to add a response body annotation so spring knows how to return this bread as, as we had to put here request body so the spring knows how to get the body and parse it to our json we need to put here response body so it knows how to return bread and uh, now if i rerun the application just a second, okay, and now if I post the bread, as you can see, we got it back and it has ID1. So if, if I change it to cornbread and let's say 100 of something, we can see that we have them too. And same goes for get bread. So in here we can uh, do a get request to get the bread with ID. This is here. It will also not work unless I put our re response body. Okay, I'm using an in-memory in database, H2. So every time I rerun the application, uh, the data goes off. So I need to create uh, more breads. And now if I go back, as you can see, we got this bread. And if I change this to 500 and put regular, send it. So it's ID is three and I go back can see that I got it and of course we have to add this response body and that is because we are using a regular controller 
Let me show you what we can do with the REST controller now. So now I have a new class in a new package called REST controller test and I annotated it with the REST controller annotation. I put the request mapping as usual, I just change it to REST and now as you can see our requests don't have the response body annotation, everything else is the same. And if we run the application, we can test it. So let's try to create some breads. Okay, and if we change it to corn bread again, uh, we can go and get the first one and get the second one. We can't get the third one because it doesn't exist. But as you can see, those two classes have the same functionality, but we're using less annotations and the code is more readable. So that's it. Those are the differences between the controller and the REST controller annotations. If you need any help with the code, feel free to ask me in the comments. As usual, you can find the code on GitHub and see you in the next video. Bye.